Hey there boys and girls, Mr. Marek here in our second video on vectors which I'm going to call vector resolution. In our first video we learned how to add vectors. Basically what we're doing today is undoing vector addition. So vector resolution means that we're going to break a vector, a given vector, into two perpendicular components or pieces. Component means a part of something. And so what we're going to be doing is taking a vector and breaking it into two parts so that we can kind of understand what's going on and make problem solving a little bit simpler. So again, a component is the perpendicular part of a vector, that two components that can be added together to give you the original vector. Vector resolution is basically what undoes, undoes in quotation marks, vector addition. So it's kind of sort of the opposite of vector addition. So let's see if a diagram can help this make a little bit more sense. Suppose, for example, we have vector A, which kind of points up and to the right. We can break vector A up into two components. A vertical component, I'm going to give that the name V or A subscript Y. Y because it's vertical. And a horizontal component. I'm going to give that the name A subscript X. X for the horizontal axis. If you add those two components up, then you would get back to the original vector A. So A Y and A X are called the components of A. So if we know how big A is, and we know its direction, then we can use some simple trig to figure out how big the components are. And we already know what their direction is, AY points up, AX points to the right, because the original vector A points up and to the right. So let's see if we can put some numbers into this example. So vector A, there are the two components. Suppose we know that A is 50 meters in length, and we know that it is 53 degrees to the right of vertical. So that angle there is 53 degrees. So let's suppose we wanted to find AY first. AY is the adjacent side of my triangle, so I'm going to use the cosine function. So I'm going to write cosine 53 degrees, and then the adjacent side is AY, the thing we're looking for. And the hypotenuse is A, the 50 meters. And so multiplying both sides by 50 meters, we would figure out that AY is equal to 30 meters. Don't forget about the direction, 30 meters going up. So we would say that the vertical component of A is 30 meters up. To do the same thing to find AX, except this time I'd use the sine function. And then solving both sides, or um, excuse me, multiplying both sides by the bottom uh, would give us that, which would give us something like 40 meters. And then we have to remember to state the direction. So AX is 40 meters to the right. So if you add up two vectors that are 30 meters up and then 40 meters to the right, you would get back to the original vector. That's what the components do. They're the two vectors that replace the one vector. Now the reason why drawing um, and calculating what the components of a vector are would be uh, useful is because it's easier to add things that are perpendicular to each other. Like I just said. So let's look at another example. Let's look at an example that's got a little bit more context to it. Let's suppose that you walk 100 miles along a line that is 37 degrees to the west of south. We want to know how far south did you walk. So here's a simple coordinate plane. To the west of south would be somewhere between west and south, kind of like I've drawn there. To figure out what that actual angle means, kind of analyze what west of south means, that means face south and then turn to the west. And so that angle right there, right here, is 37 degrees. So the vertical component, or AY, 
would be the direction that he goes south, and so the length of that vector would tell me the answer to the question. So here AY is the adjacent side of my triangle, so I'm going to use the cosine to find AY, so cosine 37 equals adjacent over hypotenuse. Multiply both sides by the 100 miles to get AY by itself. <coughs> and so AY would be 80 miles to the south. Don't forget about the direction there. Let's look at another example. Suppose that we pull a box to the right by a string, which makes a 53 degree angle with the horizontal, and exerts 200 N, N means Newtons, we'll learn more later, a force. Question is how much force is exerted horizontally? So you don't really need to know anything about forces to take a vector that's 53 degrees with the horizontal and 200 something long and figure out the horizontal component of it. So see if you can press pause draw a vector diagram, and then solve for the horizontal force on this box. Did you press pause, or are you just waiting for me to do it yourself? Okay, so let's assume that you've done that. Let's see. So there's the force. You can label force with an F if you like. It's 200 newtons. So we're looking for this component of that force. And if you want to go ahead and complete the triangle to help kind of see the relationships, you could also draw that component. And there's the 53 degree angle. And so the x component would be 200 newtons cosine 53 degrees, solving f uh, the cosine equation for the um, adjacent side. And so that would be 120 newtons to the right. So here's the question that's most commonly asked when we get to vectors and vector resolution. How do you know which angle is the one that you're given? So the angle that's given that describes a vector is the angle relative to the vector at its origin or at its beginning point. So for example, if you have a vector that makes a 20 degree, 20 degree angle with the vertical, like something like that perhaps, the beginning part of your vector is the origin, so that's where your coordinate system is. And so the vertical angle right there would be the 20 degree angle that you're given. So the thing to remember when you start making these triangles and stuff is that the vector um, angle is always given relative to its origin, not the end of it. So sometimes what I'll see happen is a student we'll try to draw the components and they'll draw them something like that and then they'll try to make this angle be the 20 degree angle usually the thing that they're doing that confuses them is they forget to draw the arrowheads whoops, on the vectors if you remember to do that, then you won't get confused because you'll always remember that the angle that's given to you is relative to the beginning of the vector. So that's the end of this lesson. Hopefully it was short and sweet and to the point. Obviously we're going to spend the next class period practicing vector addition and vector resolution in context, using it to describe two-dimensional motion and then later on two-dimensional forces. So be sure in class to bring all your notes as well as your scientific calculator to help you out with all this trig stuff. Until then, ta-ta!